we're, we're talking with the, the leaders of a workshop at DML 2016 on creating inclusive maker programs and environments. So why don't we start out by introducing yourselves and then we'll go. Okay. Hi, I'm Kylie Pepler. I'm an associate professor of learning sciences at Indiana University, and I direct a research group called the Creativity Labs. I've also been leading uh, the MacArthur Foundation's uh, Make to Learn initiative for several years now. Um, and so I'm really excited to join you for DML this year and to uh, help facilitate this session with Jessica. And I'm Jessica Ross, and I work at Project Zero, which is a research group at Harvard Graduate School of Ed. And um, our Project, the project I've been working on for the past three years is called Agency by Design, which has looked at the promises, practices, and pedagogies of maker-centered learning. And um, I've also had the pleasure of working with Kylie, looking at um, the Open Portfolio Project, so thinking about portfolios for maker. And I'm really excited to enter into this conversation about inclusive maker programs and environments for DML this year. So what, what are you looking forward to happening in, in your workshop, which is three hours long? Kylie, do you want to start? Yeah, well, I want to invite everybody to come, you know, join us. And, you know, we wouldn't be doing making unless, uh, talking about making unless we actually did some making together. And so you can expect to sort of enter the space with us and uh, just get started doing some hands on making. There's going to be a range of materials available. Um, you know, we'll be there facilitating the session. You can expect things like, um, the, uh, you know, paper roller coasters and start to build those yourself, uh, e textiles, so electronics that are embedded and textile artifacts or clothing um, that you can sew together, uh, paper circuits, uh, squishy circuits, and other kinds of commercial toolkits like little bits. So this is a chance to kind of try those things yourself and, and sort of learn more about how we've been thinking about uh, maker spaces and some of the lessons learned um, across different, uh, different spaces across the country, um, as well as just some traditional crafts. You know, making doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be um, something new, and you don't have to order anything. It could be just engaging a grandparent, and so um, and so we'll have a range of materials to get you started. And then we'll switch gears, and we'll be um, talking a little bit about what the research and some of the uh, frameworks are to sort of guide this notion of creating an inclusive maker program. Uh, Jessica, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I think I'm excited about um, hopefully a, a coming into the room and everybody getting their hands dirty and playing first, and then really having a conversation. Um, we've been lucky to have conversations with folks across the country in the past several years, like we have a space and we put some stuff in it and we don't know what to do, or we're curious about how we can invite um, these learners into a maker space and doing maker centered learning. Um, we're curious about teachers who are a little um, intimidated by coming into the space and trying to understand what kind of thinking and learning can happen into this space. Lots of things also about how maker centered learning and maker spaces fit into the ecology of K-12 or informal and um, where does it fit and who does it and um, who feels comfortable in the room and so I think I'm hoping that we have all those kinds of conversations during the day as well. Presumably the people who are coming to your workshop are, are interested in making their own maker programs and environments. What's the inclusive part and, and, and how do you do that? Well, we've been studying, you know, an array of, of makerspaces across the country. Um, and what we've been really seeing is that there's a set of design principles that the way the space is designed, the tools and materials that you choose, and the kinds of activities and ways that you engage and the, the pedagogical techniques actually can really radically change who feels included in the, envi in the environment, who feels invited. Um, and so we'll be talking about those design principles. We'll be talking about just lessons learned, things that you can do to sort of shift um, shift the space without a high dollar cost, um, but that you can start speaking to, speaking to people. One of those, uh, for example, is about having the materials in the open. So materials that you can see, projects that you can see, um, if they're behind closed uh, doors, don't seem as accessible and are not as inclusive. So even if you have cotton balls and you have different kinds of crafting materials in the space, if they're not visible, people don't know that they're there. So they don't know that the tools and materials that they would like to use or that they're comfortable using are there. So we'll talk about a little bit more about that visibility um, uh, being a, one of those kinds of design principles for the space. Jessica, what about the learning 
aspects of this pedagogy? Well, I think, I mean, another thing to add on to, first of all, what Kylie said is, you know, and inclusivity also can happen um, just with the adults in a, in a a school or space where maker is some people very feel very drawn and comfortable and confident and other even adults before we even get some of the young people in the room uh, don't feel quite so and then the other question that comes up that we've looked at for the past years is well um, so what kind of thinking and learning goes on here and how can uh, exploration of materials and this kind of um, sometimes tinkering and playing stuff that looks a little bit like playing around, what are the opportunities for really um, really thinking during these with these materials and during these opportunities? So we name a couple of things in our product, you know, the opportunities just to really look closely and to explore complexity and to find opportunity. So what are the opportunities that paper affords or paper when you add some other circuits to it or just add tape to it? And um, so hopefully we'll be able to, as we're playing, um, stop and notice those moments for learning um, during our time together. It sounds exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And good luck and have fun. Thank you.